And beyond that, you have this building. This building, the crown jewel, the crown jewel of all the efforts. The biggest solar array in the state, not on a rich person's home, but that would be a big home and be nice. <laughs> Maybe we could go by one time, you know, sip a little cocktail. No, on a community center for the people, for everyday people. That's not just important for Neighborhood House, I'm sorry. It's important for Neighborhood House. That's important for the country. That's important for the world. They have a vision of you can go to this place and in every language, the ecological agenda can be explained to you. 40 different languages. You can go to their website and you just look for a picture. If you're from Somalia, picture of a woman from Somalia. Click on that and she can talk to you in your language about the importance of this new agenda of helping people and the planet. That's important for the country to see that. You talk about changing the conversation around social uplift, changing the conversation around the environment. This building is the opportunity to do that in 40 different languages. That's extraordinary. They are going to have to invent new ways, okay, on the, the construction side to do the stuff he's talking about. The brother was up here talking about it like it was easy. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, when they leave those trees standing, they also have to wind the sidewalks around the trees. Okay? You say, well, that's not that hard. It's not that hard, except that most of the uh, uh, wiring will be underground. They have to wind the wires around the tree roots. They're scratching their heads to figure out how to do it. Let me tell you what, when they solve that riddle, they don't just solve it for a neighborhood house. Every architect and engineer across the country will benefit from the wisdom created in making this building work. This is an extraordinary, bold, breakout move that changes the agenda for the country. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a country that is hungry for change, hungry for leadership, hungry for new ideas. And Neighborhood House should be applauded and supported for being willing to take the first step. As I move to my close, I wanna say that we are going to have to change in this country, and thank goodness. We're gonna to have to change the way we fuel our buildings and our machines with clean energy, conservation measures. We're gonna to have to bring in solar, wind, wave technology, geothermal. We're gonna to have to change the way we fuel our buildings and our machines. We're gonna to have to do more than that. We're gonna to have to change the way we fuel our bodies. We're gonna to have to move to organic, food, less poison-based agriculture, less agriculture. We, right now we use these big, big machines using all this oil and gas to make one carrot. I believe they had carrots before they had all these big machines. Uh, you know, we need to change the way we fuel our bodies with local food that's grown without poison, grown close to the plate, and create jobs doing that. All of our public schools should have a rule, 50% local and organic, and change the overnight change, overnight change the economy of this country. So we're gonna to have to change the way we fuel our buildings and our machines. We have to change the way we fuel our bodies. But more importantly, we have to change the way we fuel our movements. For too long, we have fueled our movements with anger, with confrontation. We could always tell people what we were against. We couldn't tell them what we were for. And we forgot that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. didn't get famous giving a speech called, I have a complaint. <laughs> I have a critique. I have a very long list of issues about which I'm thoroughly pissed off. That wasn't the speech. That wasn't the speech. Am I wrong? The speech was about hope. The speech was about a dream. The speech was about believing in something. And that's 
that's what is being brought back here by Neighborhood House and Climate Solutions and so many others, right here. In the last century, you had a city called Montgomery. It wasn't the biggest city in the South, but it had the biggest idea, and it had world-class leadership, and people stood up, and they changed the pattern for the South and for the world. And now people all around the world, when they get in a struggle, they sing, we shall overcome, because people stood up and did the right thing in a little town called Montgomery. We need a Montgomery for the new century. And I would not be surprised if a place like Seattle, where you've already convinced everybody that green is good, and now you just have to convince everybody that green should be good for all, could play the role of a Montgomery of the new century. It's worth trying. And the reason that it's worth trying is because the world needs to know People in Iraq need to know. People overseas need to know. People in India and China need to know, and Africa and Latin America need to know that some of us in this country still believe. Some of us in this country still believe in America the beautiful and in defending that, her beauty against the, the spoilers and the clear cutters. Some of us still believe in one nation indivisible, and in providing alternatives to the politics that keeps us divided. Some of us still believe in liberty and justice for all, for all. And we won't stop until that schoolhouse pledge is honored from coast to coast. Some of us still believe in America. We know America is not the place that we live. America is the place that we are going and we keep faith on the journey. And when we get there, those of us who believe we are going to win, and when we win, we will be doing more than just taking America back, taking America back. I'm tired of hearing politicians say that. We will do much more than take America back. We are going to take America forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.